Today we're looking at how to run a GSI top dry. The first thing you do is you turn all your switches to off, turn your power on, hit the start. Then you would turn your load on to, you would turn your load to on until your full switch shows full. This is for the first startup with an empty dryer. Once the full switch shows full, you would switch your load auger to auto. So it watches your auto grain timer. You would take your aeration fan, turn it to on. That way it runs continuously. You would turn your drying fan on, your heater fan on. Now your system will run. Here we're drying barley. My, my, it's kind of hard to see in the screen. So I'm going to talk and you might not be able to see everything I do. But up here we have an unload timer at 24 seconds. We want to stay about 24 seconds there. That's not something we want to be adjusting. Your dry timer is set at, uh, should be set at five minutes. Your grain temp set point for, we're drying barley here today. We have the grain temp set point at 94. We have the plenum temp set point at 140. That grain temp could be closer to 97. We're gonna discuss how to adjust grain temps a little later in the video. We have our temperature. We can look at our, our uh, four temp sensors, make sure they're reading equal. There's a max grain sensor differential. I'm going to bump that up some. And the only reason for that grain temperature differential to get off real far is if you have a chute plugged or a chute that's not dumping grain the way it's supposed to, and then one temp sensor will run hotter. We have our grain max temp, our plenum max temp. Our grain max temp should be 20 degrees higher than our grain temp set point. Our Max plenum temp should be set at 200 or 20 degrees hotter than our plenum set point. For the timers, we have our dry timer in here set at five minutes. We have our unload time at 24 seconds, uh, purge time at 30, that's a minimum, that's where we want it. Cool down timer is uh, 20 minutes. We're going to make that three. Out of grain timer is 10 minutes. That's a good number. Fan off delay, 45 seconds. Fan start delay, two, two and a half seconds. Wet supply switch delay. That we're not using. Low level we're not using. High level we're not using. Lo using. Load one delay is 15 seconds, which is good. So in setup, we're running on off because it's warm outside. If it's warmer than about 70 degrees outside, we're gonna run the burner mode at on off. We're gonna run our burner differential at one. Auto flow enabled, we're running auto flow in this system and we're running time and temperature. When you start this system, you would always fill it, then go to auto, then start your aeration fan, drying fan, heater, and then it dries the way it's supposed to. It heats up the temperature. When it reaches temperature, it dumps for 24 seconds, closes the chutes. Whenever the grain drops off the fill switch, it starts refilling again. For setting the grain temperatures, we're st we started here with 140 degree plenum and a 97 grain on barley. So with drying grain, that you want to use for molding or if you want to use it for seed. So if the grain has to be uh, sprouting quality, you're not going to want to run your plenum temperature much over about 110 degrees or else you could damage the germ. All of your small grains, you're going to run about the same plenum temperature to grain temperature to get the, mo the moisture you want. Uh, with corn, 
you would run 180 plenum and you would start with 120 degree grain temperature and then the way you adjust your grain temperature is you start the dryer and you let it go through three dump cycles once it has completed three dump cycles go in the bin take some sap some moisture sap and find out if you're within a percent or two of what you want for moisture fit at the end and then dry for six eight hours longer and then transfer grain out of the dryer to know exactly what you're doing you need to get your moisture samples coming out of the dryer there will be a better a better blend that way so with running high, low, and on off, when it's on high fire, you will adjust this so that when running on high fire, you have enough gas pressure that the temperature rises on the controls. And when you're on low fire, this is where you adjust the low fire to get the low fire so that it is somewhere around five pounds of pressure or between three and six pounds, just so it's low enough so that the temperature falls on the controls like it gets cooler in the plenum when it's running low fire. If the temperature wants to climb on low fire with the low fire set, so we're at three, at, at three to four pounds, then you need to run on off on the burner. That way, your dryer does not overheat and hit the high limit. Adjusting, adjusting the vapor coil temperature. On where the gas comes in, on here, this top pipe, this top pipe should be about 100 degrees, 100 to 110 degrees. If it's too hot to keep your hand on it, you want to adjust this, you want to pivot you want to pivot this to get the coil out of the flame. If you get frost after the pressure regulator, then you adjust this into the flame some. Only move it a little bit at a time. A little bit is a lot on this adjustment. If this temperature were to exceed 125 degrees after the vapor pressure regulator, it will trip a vapor high temp and shut the dryer off. While I'm here, this is the air switch. If you ever have an air switch issue, if it's saying no airflow, if you back that out, go counterclockwise, makes it take less airflow to trip on. But if you have trouble with it showing airflow when the fan is not running, then turn it in a little bit to uh, make it so it takes more air pressure to turn it on. That is your air switch. Up there, by the, where the heat duct blows in, there is a temperature sensor up there. I would recommend drilling a quarter inch hole next to the temperature sensor box and drop a meat thermometer in. That way you know for sure that your, what your screen is reading is accurate temperature because those temperature sensors sometimes go bad or if there was to get water in the box or something once a year at least once a year you should be checking with a mechanical thermometer to verify that your computer screen is reading what a mechanical temperature sensor would read up there we need to keep a log book on drying grain each day or any time you make an adjustment to the dryer, either each day or any time you make an adjustment to the dryer, I want you to write down your plenum temp set point, grain temp set point, incoming moisture, outgoing moisture, grain type, date. You can have, you can have these two in a column also if you want. This is just something I drew up quick just to give you an idea. And write down each day or each time you adjust a setting in your log book. That way, 
in years to come, you can look back and know how your settings were set. The other thing, adjusting grain temperature. The grain temperature is adjusted based off of what your outgoing moisture is. So let's say your goal for outgoing moisture is 14%, but you have an outgoing moisture of 13%. You will want to lower your grain temp set point. You want to lower that five degrees for 1% in moisture. So if you have 13% going out and you want 14, lower grain temp set point five degrees, that should make the outgoing moisture go up 1%. Don't, if, if you have, let's say it looks like you want to lower the, raise the moist, outgoing moisture one, like one and a quarter percent. You think maybe a little more than 1%. Don't be afraid to make a small adjustment. Wait a few hours, test again, make another small adjustment. You'll be happier with the dryer at the end of the day. Once per day, you want to dump all the grain that's in the top. You want to put the chutes to open, leave them open. Then go down inside and go around and make sure that none of the chutes are plugged. That's something you wanna do once a day. Either make it a habit of first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening. So I'm not gonna go into detail on temperatures for every grain as far as plenum temp, and temp set point. There's a lot of variables on that and I can explain them, but I would, I would just as soon you call me whenever you're ready to start a new grain and I will help you get started and find out what you're looking to accomplish, what you're working with, and I'll help you get started. And as you build a log, you will be able to have a record of how to go about setting it up the next year. Corn, you're gonna start with a 180 plenum and a 120 degree grain temp, just a starting point. And soybeans, you're gonna start with like a 140 and a 110. And that's just a starting point. now. That may be too hot, that may be too cool. There's, there's a lot of variables on temperature and any temperatures I give in this video are not in any way do I stand behind them as they will work on your dryer because there are variables with different dryers on temperature, probe settings and a lot of different variables. So. You need to know your dryer before you start setting random temperatures.